The Intelligent Investor guides its readers on how to invest safely, avoid losses and build their wealth over time. Instead of focusing just on the stock market, this book will help you become a better investor. This video will explain the summary of The Intelligent Investor. You will also learn the investing style of Warren Buffet, which will help you in your investing decisions and finding the value stocks that can give you profits. The Intelligent Investor is a book about investing in the stock market that focuses on lowering financial risk. There is an emphasis on cautious, long-term planning. Graham prefers to make investments based on evidence rather than guesses based on predictions. The Intelligent Investor teaches you how to do value investing so that Mr. Market doesn't tell you what to do with your money. Stay until the end of this video because we will tell you how you can become an intelligent investor with the help of the book The Intelligent Investor. Let's have a look at the summary of the book and what it really wants investors to do. Point number one, investors can be split into two categories. Conservative investors try to avoid losses, get reasonable returns, and make few choices. To actively manage their investments, enterprising investors commit much of their time. An adventurous investor puts more time and effort into picking stocks than a risk-averse one but takes fewer chances. Point number two. Graham recommends that investors avoid IPOs like the plaque. Most IPOs happen during bull markets, which can cause stock prices to go through the roof. When a bear market starts, these overpriced speculative stocks are the first to fall and cause big losses. From 1980 to 2001, a 23% yearly underperformance awaited an investor who purchased every IPO at its public closing price and kept on for three years. When the stocks of new, unremarkable small businesses are worth more than those of well-known, medium-sized companies, this is a good sign that the bull market is about to end. Over 4,000 new stocks were launched during the 1980s bull market. Because of this, the economy collapsed in 1987. The lack of initial public offerings IPOs between 1988 and 1990 contributed to the bull market of the 1990s. In the years leading up to the end of the dot-com boom in 2001, more than 5,000 new stocks were created. Point number three, attempting to time the market poses a significant risk for casual investors. Instead, value investors seek out and buy shares in big, conservatively capitalized firms whose stock prices are much lower than their assessed worth based on their tangible assets. It takes little effort to try to predict the future, and the buffer is big enough to handle bad things that happen. Point number four, if you are a savvy investor, you should welcome the arrival of a bear market. They understand that a stock's riskiness increases as its price rises and decreases as its price falls. A bear market is the best time to do it if you want to acquire stocks at or near their asset value and develop long-term wealth. Point number five, no matter the state of the market, a defensive investor's portfolio must consist of equal parts investment grade bonds and common equities. They won't be tempted to overinvest in stocks during a bull market or rush into bonds during a downturn. Once a defensive investor has set up a portfolio, they will look at it every six months and rebalance it if market changes change this ratio by more than 5%. Point number six, investors who believe they can predict how the market will move only put 25% of their portfolio in stocks when it is very volatile. But they might put 75% of their portfolio in stocks when it is in a bear market. Bonds provide investors with the safety net they need to ride out even the worst bear markets without selling their assets. Point number seven, unless you are in the lowest tax bracket, you should only invest in tax-free municipal bonds. Bonds due in five to 10 years are the most stable regarding changes in profit rates. Bond mutual funds are an excellent choice for investors who want to lower their overall risk profile because they're easy to get into and have a lot of ways to diversify. Point number eight, According to Graham and Warren Buffet, index funds are the best long-term option for defensive investors. Investors in index funds don't have to choose individual stocks. Instead, they get a portfolio of stocks that represents the whole market. Index funds are low-risk investments that have outperformed the vast majority of mutual funds over 20-year periods, even though they don't have as much flash and have more stable returns than more risky funds. Point number nine. Graham insists on calculating the P.E. ratio using a moving average over many years. Imagine a corporation that over six years generated $0.5 in earnings per share, but $3 in the most recent 12 months. 
Based on the previous fiscal year's results, the stock would be worth $75 at a PE of 25. The stock would be worth just $21.43 if priced at 25 times the 7-year earnings average. Now, before we move on to the 9-step plan of investment used by Warren Buffet, make sure to hit the thumbs up icon below to like this video. The 9-step plan that Warren Buffet uses to invest. Buffet's investing strategy is mostly secret. Thus, we can only speculate about the specifics of his due diligence procedures. However, if you want to invest like Warren Buffet, these are some of the most significant ideas you can take away from his work. Number 1. Try to include some buffer space in your plans. The need to keep a buffer is one of the most important parts of Buffet's way of investing. A margin of safety is a set of features of investment that reduce the risk of financial loss. A $2 margin of safety exists. For instance, if a stock sells for $10 per share, but the true value of the company assets is $12 per share. The firm's stock price should stay within its intrinsic value. Buffet's investment strategy is to pay only what a business is worth. Investing too much money in the shares of a great firm may wipe out a decade's worth of financial gains, as he puts it. Number 2. Pay attention to the quality Warren Buffet does not throw his money in the garbage. He seldom invests in failing companies, even when they are dirt cheap. Buffet gave prospective investors the finest advice. It's much better to acquire a fantastic firm at a fair price than a fair company at a higher price. Number 3. Avoid becoming a sheep and thinking that everyone else is right. Another bit of Buffet's advice that new investors wouldn't heed, particularly in the era of Reddit investor threads, is to avoid buying stocks because everyone else seems to be doing so. Try not to be a perpetual cynic who sells off the stocks everyone else is purchasing. If you want to invest like Warren Buffet, you must tune out the noise and determine your value. Then he says, to be successful in investing, temperament is more necessary than intelligence. You need the kind of personality that doesn't get a kick out of siding with the herd or going against the grain. Number 4. Have no apprehension about market corrections and collapses While stock trading apparently aims to buy cheap and sell high, human nature may urge us to do the exact opposite. Seeing our peers succeeding financially often motivates us to pursue financial independence ourselves. And when the stock market crashes, we tend to bail out before the values fall much worse. It's no secret that 2022 has been a busy year for Warren Buffet, since he thrives on bargains created by falling stock prices. Would you freak out and run away if you were shopping at your favorite store and discovered that everything in the store was 20% off? Without a doubt, nope. Buffet says that when his preferred stocks are on sale, those windows of opportunity are rare. In other words, when it starts to rain gold, you should not be tiptoeing about with a thimble. Number 5. Think about your investments in the broadest possible terms. If you aren't willing to buy a stock for 10 years, don't even consider owning it for 10 minutes, which is one of the most significant Warren Buffet quotes about investing that you can take in. He doesn't choose stocks based on predictions of price increases over the next few days, months or years. When Buffet invests, it's for the long haul. He wants to be the owner of the company he invests in. However, although he sells stocks regularly, he invests with the intention of holding on to most of them indefinitely for several reasons. And if you can't commit to holding your assets forever, Buffet says an S&P 500 index fund is one of the finest, set it and forget it investments you can make. Number 6. If the situation changes, step back and consider selling. Warren Buffet is often quoted as saying, the most important thing to do if you find yourself in a hole is to quit digging. He hopes to hold on to every share of stock he purchases indefinitely, but he knows that market conditions and expectations might change. Buffet bought a large stake in mortgage lender Freddie Mac OTC FMCC several decades ago, which may surprise you. But he saw that the lender's management was beginning to take needless risks with the company's capital a few years before the 2007-2009 financial crisis, so he sold. It became obvious that Buffet had made a good decision when the financial crisis arrived. Number 7. Learn about value investing concepts Most people agree that Warren Buffet is the best value investor in history. Value investors look for bargains in the market and try to buy assets below their true worth. A value investor's ultimate goal is to buy shares worth $100 for less than $100, preferably a lot less. To invest, value investors look for firms whose intrinsic worth is higher than the enterprise value represented by the prices at which their stocks trade. Value investors like Warren Buffet wager that the stock price of an undervalued firm will rise once the market realizes the company's true worth. Number 8. Learn to Compound Long-term compounding has paid off well for Warren Buffet. 
Buffet can use the power of compound profit and dividend reinvestment by always putting Berkshire's operational cash flow back into the business. How potent is that? Since Buffet's takeover in 1964, Berkshire has returned an annualized 20.1%, while the S&P 500 has returned an annualized 10.5%. This may not seem like much, but it has resulted in a total return for stockholders of 3,641,613% compared to only 30,209% for the S&P 500. Number 9. Dig deeper and think it through Buffet is known for working long hours at its Omaha, Nebraska office. Investors are sometimes taken aback when they realize that most of their time is spent sitting in silence or reading. I insist on a lot of time being spent virtually every day to simply sit and think he is said to have said. According to Buffet, the key to his success has been learning as much as possible about investing since this is a field where one's knowledge grows exponentially over time. Graham emphasizes relying on facts throughout the book, knowing your financial condition and objectives might help you manage money wisely. Some investors say index funds and rates are the future. Others value financial advisors. Find a reputable financial advisor before making financial decisions evaluate the facts. Warren Buffet's success followed identical norms. Follow these rules and utilize this investment method to replicate Warren Buffet's success. That is all for today's video. If you want timely updates from this channel about investing in money, click the bell icon and subscribe to Omega Finance. Are you planning to invest in Warren Buffet style? In the comment section below, share your investment philosophy and the criteria you use to choose a firm to invest in. We have also uploaded a video on the book The Psychology of Money on our channel which can be very helpful to you for knowing all the secret tips to becoming rich in that book and how to become a millionaire in 2023. You can find the link to that video in the description below and in the card.